welcome dear students to yet another session on pituitary hormones and today the topic of interest is oxytocin and oxytocin is released by the pituitary gland but it is produced by the hypothalamus and it's a peptide hormone consisting of nine amino acids and it's also a neuropeptide so it has a half life of 6 minutes this is the uh, nine amino acids cysteine tyrosine isoleucine glutamine asparagin cysteine proline leucine glycine okay so uh, there is a disulfide bridge between the two cysteine residues so we know uh, about the fight or flight hormones that is the adrenal uh, adrenal and noradrenaline and these are called the love hormones uh, the oxytocin and endorphins are called the love hormones that is they are important for muscle relaxing and the energy is sent to the uterus and there is decrease sensitivity to awareness of pain so oxytocin secretion from the pituitary it's produced by the hypothalamic neuron released into the hypothalamo hypophysial tract enters the posterior pituitary sorry uh, anterior uh, sorry posterior pit enters the posterior pituitary and it is released from the pituitary once it is released it can affect uterine contraction it can also affect lactation from the breast tissues so uterine contraction in effect can cause a stretching of the uterus and the uterine cervix whereas mechanical stimulation of the nipples of the breast all of these can activate the hypothalamic neuron to release more oxytocin so these are potentials uh, these are potential stimulations of the hypothalamus to release more oxytocin to produce more oxytocin and the posterior pituitary then releases the oxytocin so there are different factors which affect oxytocin release one is social cognition which is a positive effect stress response is also a positive effect affiliative behavior is also a positive effect so you have affiliative behavior social cognition and stress response which are also which are all activatory and uh, oxy oxytocin is produced in the hypothalamus and uh, sent to the Uh, posterior polypeptide okay so appetite regulation example food and salt are negative inhibitors of oxytocin release autonomic regulation by the autonomic nervous system is also a positive effect on the oxytocin release synthesis and release so the oxytocin has two major functions one is the neurocrine neuroendocrine actions that is it activates prolactin uh and acth production from the anterior pituitary and the endocrine actions of oxytocin is it uh, allows milk let down and parturition both are involved with lactation of the mother oxytocin release is based on several different factors emotional social cognitive neuroendocrine and autoregulation so we'll see one by one so in the emotional factors involved in oxytocin release in uh, is involves anxiolysis positive mood passive stress coping and trust so all these effects or all these emotional states can cause oxytocin release in social factors you can involve maternal behavior maternal aggression 
pair bonding that is a bonding between the mother and the child and sexual behaviors so all these can cause oxytocin release cognitive factors include social memory olfactory memory is based on his smell and spatial memory neuroendocrine factors is the attenuation of the hpa axis response that is from the hypothalamus and local amino acids and neuro uh, noradrenaline release so that will cause oxytocin release auto regulation of oxytocin release is through morphological plasticity uh, auto excitation during birth and suckling so uh, during birth and suckling it is uh, automatically released morphological plasticity is a condition where the organism's behavior morphology and physiology changes in response to a unique environment so auto regulation is where of oxytocin is where you have morphological plasticity and changes in the morphology happens in response to a unique environment so it depends on the environmental condition involved in the organism so the oxytocin receptor is linked to signaling pathways and the oxytocin receptor you can see it over here oxytocin receptor so this is the oxytocin receptor and it activates the g alpha q11 and then plc so the activation is through the g protein coupled receptor which activates phospholipase c so phospholipase c converts phosphatidylinositol diphosphate to inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerol diacylglycerol activates protein kinase c protein kinase c activates map kinase cascade activation system and the map kinase cascade activation system increases phospholipase a2 activity cytoplasmic phospholipase a2 activity which in turn produces prostaglandin production so both the map kinase activation and the phospholipase a2 activity produces prostaglandin production as a result you have contraction in the myometrial cell so this is the effect in the myometrial cell inositol triphosphate mobilizes intracellular calcium reserves increases calcium concentration and the oxytocin receptor in effect activates the voltage gated calcium channels which again increases calcium concentration inside the cell and calmodulin is activated with the help of calcium forming the calcium calmodulin complex which then binds to the myosin light chain kinase activation produces my myosin light chain kinase activation uh, and which eventually causes contraction so the oxytocin receptor also produces a rho a rok activation which is the rho a associated with protein kinase and that in effect again produce, uh, produces an increase in mlc phosphorylation which also causes contraction so in this uh, hormonal system you have G, G protein coupled phospholipase C, protein kinase C, MLC kinase, and rho associated protein kinase. So this, these are the different kinases that are involved. So this is a uh, explanation of the same thing. So finally, all of this. in effect causes myometrial contraction so in this figure you can see the regulation of oxytocin release 
that is the posterior pituitary releases oxytocin fever pain noise fever produces a negative effect so that oxytocin is not released and when oxytocin is released it will activate the myoepithelial cell contraction and milk ejection from the breast and suckling of the lactation lactating breast by the child also produces a positive effect on the release of more oxytocin oxytocin also causes uterine contraction as a result the cervix stretches and indicates the end of pregnancy this in effect the stretch of the cervix and the end of pregnancy again activates the pituitary to release more oxytocin so here you can see the details regarding the stretch of the cervix that is the head of the fetus pushes against the cervix and the nerve impulses from the cervix is transmitted to the brain the brain stimulates pituitary gland or the hypothalamus stimulates pituitary gland to secrete oxytocin oxytocin is carried to the uterus and it stimulates uterine contractions pushing the fetus towards the cervix so that was about oxytocin